And here comes the three main approaches for measuring value of personal property, not only art or personal property. Uh, the first one is quite straightforward, the cost approach, which is to compare the item being appraised with the cost to replace it, most likely through production, reproduction, or purchase. And the further breaking down into replacement cost new, which is the cost to replace an item with a new item of like kind, quality, and utility. The second one is replacement cost used, which is the cost, sorry, which is the cost to replace an equivalent item having similar appearance, quality, condition, age, authorship, and utility. So you will see why for art appraisal sometimes this is more suitable because um, particularly for artwork or antique, um, the condition and age could, could vary, right? The second approach is the sales comparison approach. It is an analyze of similar sold property in order to derive an indication of the most probable value of the property being appraised. So it is the appraiser's duty to identify similar, if not exact, duplicate property that was sold within the defined marketplace that make adjustments in value for the differences that exist. And the last one is the income approach, which is basically the factors in the income that a property garners. So this is not really often used for other appraisals, so uh, I will skip this one here. And using those approach, we will get like the values that we desire. And these three are the most common val types of values in art appraisal. The first one is replacement cost. So um, quite straightforward, which is the amount of money one might be expected to pay to replace a property, right? And it further requires the property to have similar qualities within a reasonable time and within the appropriate market. So um, one principle of insurance, not only art insurance, is it can help, like, is how much it would take the um, client to be whole again. So his access before loss was this, and his over loss, and it got gone down. And in principle, he should, the art insurance should pay to return the client to where he was before um, the incident. So you can see why replacement costs should be the principal um, value used for art insurance, okay? And the second one is market value, which is the most probable price that a buyer will have to pay, and the seller is most likely to receive for, an, for, an, for property within the defined marketplace at a particular point in time. The last one is fair market value, which is the price at which property would change hands between a willing buyer a wi and, and, and a willing seller, neither being under any compulsion to buy or sell and both having reasonable knowledge of relevant facts. So um, fair market value and market value are actually quite similar. But two main differences is um, for fair market value is a hypothetical situation because if two persons, buy or seller, doesn't have compulsion to buy or sell, it really doesn't happen, right? So it's a hypothetical um, situation. And market value, for market value, there could be a compulsion to buy or sell. So this is just kind of like a, a, a really straightforward table to, to uh, demonstrate what I just mentioned in the two slides. Um, so the appraiser find out if the client comes to him, he say that, oh, the purpose for me doing this appraisal is to, for donation purpose, for estate. Then as an appraiser, I know the objective is to get the fair market value. So I will use the sales comparison approach. And then the result that I get will be the fair market values. Okay? And if I understand from the client as an appraiser that he's looking to get insurance coverage, then I know what I need to give is the estimate cost. So I'll use the cost approach, and the result that I'll get is the replacement cost new and or used. Okay? So these are some important notes about art appraisal. Um, the intended use, like I mentioned, determine the approach to use. Um, the scope of work determined for the appraiser the choice of market and values to explore. The appraiser should always inspect the items in person. 
otherwise, he will have to make it clear in the report that um, he will basically base all his information from the clients. And as insurance company, sometimes I may not accept that. Okay, and any professional appraiser should be able to properly identify, but not necessarily authenticate property. So uh, identify is about um, the scientific determination of an object, like the measurements, appearance, um, weight, something like that. But authenticate is more like a scholarly determination of whether something is real or fake. Okay, so that's uh, usually not within the scope of an appraiser's um, duties. And during appraise, like during the inspection, the appraiser will typically take pictures, uh, make notes, get measurements, and it is quite common for appraiser to unhook paintings from the wall or open up frames so that we can see the back of the of the painting to check for labels, signatures, or uh, restoration marks. Um, sometimes we also use black light to check also a mark of any previous restoration. So after all that, um, to present an, an professional appraisal, what should it look like? It should be written in an orderly and logical manner, okay? Usually there are three sessions. It, it's usually divided into three sessions. Um, the cover session, like straightly speaking, is covers um, the who, what, where, when, why, how of the assignment. Okay, so the, the background story of the assignment. And the body will be more item specific of each item being appraised with description of each item and the final value conclusion of each item. And also to us there maybe there's a total sum. And it also should demonstrate the analyze of how such conclusion is achieved. For high value item, it should, there should be at least three comparables to justify the reasoning. Okay, the addendum would be the uh, relevant information uh, like the appraiser's qualifications or supplementary materials like glossary because not everyone understands jargon being used or artist biography, okay? Um, this is an extract from a recent assignment that I did for a Xiang Yu painting. So if I tell you um, for this painting, so this is what I mentioned by uh, comparables. If I tell you that um, that is an art insurance um, appraisal and I couldn't show you the actual painting because that the uh, cl uh, client's uh, confidence reasons, right? But if I tell you the replacement cost that I propose was uh, 12 million US, you at least see where I come from. Um, like here, I list three comparables. They're all from international auctions, like before, below the uh, sale information description. The, the painting I appraised was also um, flowers in a vase. And you can see the value achieved. I also include the bias premium because I'm using the um, replacement cost. So the image, um, the client will be able to, to compare the image to his own work. And I also make notes about how, what I think is same or what I think is different from the, the painting being appraised. So um, to read out the first one, same materials, similar subject matter, similar year of creation, similar size, but darker color. Okay, so the, the client will have a better understanding like how the process which I formulate this valuation. And um, I don't know whether you guys will one day um, go and get an appraisal, but if you do, I would advise you to appoint an art appraiser who is a member of a recognized institutions and professional bodies. Uh, in the US, there are three most sort of uh, uh, respectable institutions. They are International Society of Appraisers, ISA, the American Society of Appraisers, ASA, and Appraisers Association of America, AA. In the UK, there is um, Royal Institution of Charters uh, Surveyors, RICS. Because such professional bodies, they hold their members to a high professional and ethical standards. And if any member fail to adhere to their codes, they were subject to disciplinary actions. Another way for you to um, ensure the quality of your appraisals is to make sure that the appraiser uses, like to prepare the report accordance to what we call uh, USPAT, 
the full name is the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. So e um, USPAP is issued by the Appraisal Foundation in the US as an authoritative document. So basically, it provides a standard of professional conduct for all appraisers. And it also helps for you as users, potentially, as a benchmark of, of professionalism, how you judge the performance of the appraiser. Um, yeah, I've, I think I'll just quickly go through the damage claims, right? Um, so um, at damage claims, how an appraiser can help is to determine any or how much is the loss in value at uh, damage. And art insurance, com like uh, for art insurance, the common types of settlement proposal is um, we can find an appraiser to restore the work to its pre-damaged condition, and if there's any loss in value, then uh, we will pay for the causes of restoration and also the depreciation. We may elect to replace the work. If, say, uh, an additional print is being damaged, sometimes the um, client will accept a replacement of a different print from the same, um, different edition from the same series. Um, we may reproduce the work because some artists or foundry, they may agree to reproduce the work again. And sometimes if such cannot be done, then we will cash out the property, which means that we will pay for the agreed value and the salvage and title will be transferred to the insurance company. And um, so these are some pointers about, um, about the um, appraisal for damage or losses. Um, the insurance company will always ask the appraiser to provide the loss in value in percentage, okay, so that we can calculate it against the agreed value. And um, for any claim on loss in value, it has to be done only after the restoration is completed because the quality of the restoration is also an important factor in considering such depreciation, if there's any. And uh, if the artwork is deemed a total loss, then we will use the salvage value, which is principle is to maybe sell it as a scrap metal there and then. And um, to perform, like how does an appraiser perform a loss in value appraisal? He or she will do it by comparing the damaged item to items of similar conditions that were already sold in the marketplace. And how, like where they obtain such information? They can get it from specialists, dealers, or auctioneers um, who are specialized in the subject field. Or they can also compare the um, auction houses condition reports. So coming to the conclusion, um, I hope my short presentation has been able to demonstrate to you that art appraisal indeed uh, demands specialized skills and knowledge. And it is actually guided by high professional and ethical standards. And the one thing I want you to know is, I want to make you understand that art appraisal process should not be myst mysterious. Rather, it should be quite transparent. So um, the user or anyone as a layman will be able to understand um, the appraisal and how, how, does the, the, how are the values yield. And just to speak about the current status of um, where we are right now. Um, today, it's still more common for collectors to approach um, dealers or auction houses for opinion of value, which I don't blame them, because indeed, there's an insufficient number of qualified professional art appraisers in Asia. And even if collectors, they want to buy insurance sometimes, they don't have up-to-date um, valuation and, and it will be a struggle for them to buy art insurance. And for insurance company, there are still many collectors who elect to sell insure, which is not buying insurance, basically. So uh, thank you, and uh, I hope my short presentation have given you some insights on, on the um, um, on other insurance and appraisals. And uh, if, you have, if you're interested, um, I have an abstract that I've written for the, um, um, for, for the forum. And so you can read in it as in both English and Chinese. And if you have any further questions, feel free to drop me an email anytime. Thank you very much.